Mr. LaCroix, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Well, the theme for this year's International Day of UN Peacekeepers is people, peace, progress, power of partnerships. Um, explain for us the importance and the meaning behind this particular theme. Well, um, I think it's uh, really important to highlight that uh, peacekeeping ultimately is about people because it's about um, supporting efforts to bring back peace to communities and uh, enable people to resume their efforts towards uh, prosperity and development. And uh, in order to achieve that, uh, we need partners, we need partnership. We need to work with uh, our member states. We need them to be uh, supporting us uh, with uh, contributions in uh, men and women, uh, uniform personnel, with finance, and most importantly, with political support. But we also need to work in partnership with the host communities, the host governments, and uh, the other actors that are operating in, uh, in the field. So partnership is absolutely essential to achieve this goal of making a difference in the lives of people. There is so much happening in the world right now and so many different stressors, um, exacerbating everything, it seems. Um, has there ever been any consideration or is there any consideration to deploy UN peacekeepers to Ukraine? We know that IAEA inspectors have successfully been to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And it's been recently reported that U the Ukraine side has suggested that a UN peacekeeping group could secure the station that is currently under Russian control. So my question is, could the presence of a UN team lower tensions between both sides there? Well, it, it's interesting to note that uh, uh, in uh, a number of situations, uh, which are currently conflict situation, we occasionally hear uh, call for the deployment of UN peacekeepers. And in a way, uh, it kind of uh, suggests that uh, uh, this is a role that is recognized. But obviously, uh, for uh, peacekeeping uh, to be, um, to or peacekeepers rather, to be deployed uh, um, in a given situation, there has to be a number of conditions. And uh, certainly, uh, in a situation of conflict, uh, the number one condition would be the agreement of the parties. And of course, uh, there has to be also a, uh, a decision by the UN Security Council. Uh, this is how we, we operate. So um, you, you can imagine all kinds of scenarios. And uh, 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 this has been uh, mentioned by uh, or at least this possibility has been uh, mentioned uh, in the context uh, that you uh, referred to in the context of, uh, of uh, the nuclear power plant. Uh, we are not there yet, and, uh, and we don't know whether they, we will be there at some point. What is important, I believe, when it comes to uh, this uh, nuclear power plant is to make sure that uh, there will be no uh, uh, major and uh, incident, or even uh, you know anything that could uh, uh, turn into uh, an additional disaster for uh, the people of the region, and this is the uh, this is the meaning of the efforts that uh, the United Nations are currently uh, uh, conducting. Actually, it's mostly the IAEA which has been conducting these efforts with the support of uh, the UN. Most of the UN peacekeeping missions are on the African continent. The mission in Mali is soon entering its 10th year and considered one of the most dangerous. Many peacekeepers have lost their lives in recent months and in the years uh, prior. You visited, visited Mali recently to visit the troops. So can you describe the current situation there and what are some of the ongoing challenges that still exist in Mali? Well, the situation in Mali and indeed the situation in Sahel is is, uh, is, is very worrying because uh, we're seeing a, a security situation that is deteriorating, and uh, 
Uh, and as a result of that, the population is is suffering, and uh, we're seeing more displaced persons and uh, and a humanitarian situation, which is already dire, being uh, uh, made even more serious because of that. Now, um, we are um, actually uh, uh, doing everything to uh, mitigate the impact on the civilian population to uh, carry out our mandate of protection of civilians. And at the same time, uh, we uh, are determined to continue supporting the political efforts because ultimately in Mali, the solution will have to be political and it has to go. Uh, there are various uh, uh, routes. One of them is the implementation of the so-called Algiers Agreement, uh, uh, which uh, we are actively supporting and for which there has been recently a number of meetings. The other one is uh, bringing about or implementing the uh, political transition for which there has been an agreement on the timetable. So we are determined to do all this. I was in Mali recently for uh, talks with the Malian authorities, as well as, of course, our colleagues from MINUSMA and the population. By the way, the population is um, in the areas where we are deployed, where MINUSMA is deployed, is very supportive of uh, what we do. And uh, I think it's comforting because uh, um, we are also affected by disinformation regarding what the mission does. And sometimes it's a very negative disinformation. Um, so we basically want to uh, look ahead. We, uh, we are in the process of conducting a review of uh, the mission in Mali. We want to work with the Malian authorities so that we can define common objectives. And we want to make sure that uh, as we will be working with the Malian authorities, we will be able also to make recommendations for which our member states, and particularly the Security Council, will be comfortable. So our agenda is really to support Mali, to support the uh, efforts towards uh, bringing peace and, uh, and, and reducing this uh, uh, level of violence and also taking forward the political uh, processes. Some of the UN troops in Mali include more than 400 Chinese soldiers. China, as we know, is a major contributor to the UN's peacekeeping effort, especially in Africa. So how key is China's role when it comes to the numbers dispatched and the role that they play on the ground? Uh, the Chinese peacekeepers are uh, playing a very important role. Uh, the, we have... Um, them in, in many of our operations. Mali is one of them, but uh, also uh, many other peacekeeping operations uh, in Africa and beyond Africa, also in the Middle East. But China is also a major uh, financial contributor and uh, a, a country that supports us, of course, in the Security Council. But uh, beyond that, um, we're, uh, we're getting support from China to our efforts to improve the effectiveness and impact of peacekeeping. And we consider this as very important because uh, we are challenged uh, from the point of view of the political and security environment in which we operate. You refer to the uh, number of fatalities that unfortunately uh, 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 is uh, still too high. And uh, uh, the, uh, the the efforts that we're making, uh, they have uh, uh, one of the priorities of these efforts is actually to make sure that as we will be more effective, our peacekeepers will also be uh, safer. And I, I'm mentioning this in particular since China took the lead in supporting the efforts that we're carrying out uh, regarding the, the theme of the safety and security of our peacekeepers, which is critically important. You mentioned China taking the lead. China is also delivering on its promise to have a standby peacekeeping force of 8,000 if and when needed. How do you see China's role growing uh, in these efforts in the years ahead? And what do you hope to see there? Yes, we, we are currently deploying uh, units from uh, China in a number of uh, uh, missions. Actually, one of them is uh, the, the mission that we have in Abyei, which is this uh, um, disputed area between Sudan and South Sudan, where uh, we have uh, deployed uh, uh, Chinese helicopters. And uh, we are also working to deploy uh, a unit of uh, 
unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV or UAS to be more specific in Mali uh, from China, which are going to be critically important for the purpose of uh, improving the uh, situational awareness of the mission. So uh, there's a lot that we're doing uh, with China and uh, I'm quite sure that we will be uh, doing more because there are opportunities that uh, uh, emerge on a regular basis because we're constantly adapting our peacekeeping operations because we want them to have the capacities that are adequate to the needs and to the situation on the ground and that creates opportunities for new deployment. And we're very happy to, to count on the uh, availability of uh, China to support us. The United Nations has 17 sustainable development goals to reach by the year 2030. That's coming up uh, before we know it. Number 16 is peace, justice, and strong institutions. What is your assessment of where you stand right now and what more needs to happen to be able to reach that goal by 2030? Well, building a strong institution is absolutely critical to us because uh, we are deployed in, uh, in most cases in, in contexts where the state capacities are, are weak and therefore um, the creating the conditions for our own operations to gradually withdraw, but withdraw uh, in conditions where basically we leave behind us an improved situation from the point of view of uh, security and development implies that we contribute to building strong national capacity, particularly in the area of security and rule of law. I think that uh, uh, we need to do more uh, on this, our peacekeeping missions are doing their part, but uh, um, their uh, ability to respond to the needs uh, that are quite uh, important in terms of uh, national state capacities are, uh, are are limited. So we need to build uh, capacities together with partners. And this is where the importance of partnership is also extremely relevant for the purpose of building strong state institution, which is one of our top priorities. We need to work with all partners, regional, sub-regional organizations, but also important and influent membership mem member states who can help us in those efforts. And here again, I believe that China uh, has a very important role to play in, in these efforts of building strong national institutions. It's been a couple of years since uh, many of these leaders have gotten together. We had a pandemic break. What do you hope is the key message and the big takeaway as everyone comes together this week? <clears throat> well, um, we certainly uh, need um, to have a strong multilateralism. And the reason is very simple to understand. Also, the uh, putting it into practice is more difficult. The challenges that we're facing are uh, essentially uh, calling for a multilateral response. Uh, if you talk about climate change, if you call talk about um, terrorism, if you talk about pandemics, if you talk about the illegal exploitation of natural resources, um, and, and many other challenges. These are global challenges. And therefore, global challenges have to be addressed by the international community as a whole. There is not a single country that can address these issues successfully you know, without uh, entering into partnership with others. And I think that's the key message. We have an international community which uh, should be more united. Uh, I think uh, uh, the, the theme of uh, the unity, the awareness that all these key global challenges require a strong, united response from our membership is absolutely a key uh, when it comes to, I believe, the challenges ahead. And certainly uh, we hope and I hope that uh, uh, these will be very much in the mind of uh, the, uh, the leaders that will gather here in New York this week. Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you making the time for us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much.